Hi, this is Karen from the Huntley Library. Uh, thanks for joining me this afternoon for Teen Crafter Noon. Today we're going to be making creeper bookends, which are bookends that look like the creepers from Minecraft. Um, you can make all kinds of different characters or other designs on your bookends too, so don't feel like you have to be limited by creepers if that's not your thing. Uh, but we're going to gather our supplies together and then we'll get started making the creeper bookends. They'll be very awesome. Here's what we're going to be using to make our creeper bookends today. Um, you need a couple of bricks if you're going to make two bookends. So I got a couple of these here. Um, some paint. I have um, different colors of acrylic paint. There's some white for priming it. Um, some different greens for the color of the creepers. And um, some black for the accents, the eyes and the feet, and so on and so forth. You're going to need some brushes to paint with and also some water for cleaning your brushes and some Mod Podge too or something else to help seal your bookends so that your paint doesn't chip off or get damaged by uh, water or anything else that happens to it in your environment. So gather your supplies together and we'll get started. Alright, I just wanted to show you a few reference photos of what we're going to be making. So you probably know that the creeper is a enemy or character in Minecraft. So this is um, an example of someone else's bookends which they made out of wood. So if you don't have bricks but you do have scrap pieces of wood you could make them out of wood. And they've actually cut off um, or they have little square pieces or little rectangle pieces for the feet there. We're just going to use um, a breaker. That's what I'm going to do today. Uh, so I'm not going to add anything that I have to glue on or attach to this brick. Um, the brick should stand up pretty well on its own and bricks are nice and heavy too so it'll hold books up nicely. So that's a simpler design and this is how it looks kind of in action holding up some Minecraft strategy guides which I'm sure you have a bunch of so these would be an appropriate <laughs> bookend for those. Um, some other creeper pictures. So if you wanted to um, add other accents like these little squares and other greens, you could do that. I'm thinking maybe like a little square stencil would be great. Um, and then you could just apply them randomly around your creeper. And here's some other ones too. This one has a lot of different greens and whites and beiges and things going on. So uh, it depends on how much uh, painting effort you want to put into your project today. I'm going to go with uh, minimum easy. So the first thing you want to do is paint your brick or your wood, if you're going to use wood, uh, with some white paint just so that my brick is pretty absorbent and it's probably going to take the paint really well. Um, and I want to have a nice base for my green to show up against. So I'm just going to use a larger brush. If you have a larger brush for this, um, that's probably what you want to use. If you use a little brush like this, it's going to take a long time for you to paint. And then you can paint all of the sides of your brick or all of them except for one that you stand it up on and try and get into all of the little nooks and crannies so you get a good even coat of the paint on here. Make sure you put down something to protect your painting surface. You're probably used to seeing my table by now. I probably should put something down in front of this too so it doesn't splash back on me. I managed to get paint on myself as soon as I opened the paint, so that's just my life. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to stand it up this way and then the bottom, I am not going to paint the, the bottom that it's resting on. Um, I am thinking I might actually cut a piece of felt to fit on that so that it protects my bookshelf surface from the bottom of the brick and I'll glue that on after I finish painting the whole thing. So add that to your list of supplies if you want to do it. It's optional. Um, a piece of felt to go on the bottom of your brick. 
bookend. Okay, and then we can just turn this around. See, paint on me already. I picked these bricks up from Home Depot, but you could probably find them at Lowe's or other places, Menards, that sell things like that. And bricks are relatively inexpensive. Um, for two of them, I think it was about a dollar sixty. So save your pennies if you are wanting to make this craft. And you can make. I mean, if you're not into Minecraft and you're not, or even if you are, but you don't want to make a creeper, there are lots of other things that are shaped like this in Minecraft. Um, <laughs> now I've painted myself into a corner here. Uh, so you could make something else that's rectangular or square in shape and just do different colors or do a different creature or paint a scene or a design on your brick instead. I saw this really cool idea for um, putting book covers on, like painting a book cover on the brick, on a brick, and then using those as either bookends or decorations on your shelves. And I hope that we can do that someday. I was very impressed by the quality of artistry or workmanship on, on the ones that I saw. So do a search on an image search on that online if you want to see. I think brick uh, book covers might bring something up for you. And I should have one one more of the narrow sides to do here. And then this might take a little while to dry, so plan ahead, have other projects going in the background or while you're waiting for this. And you can definitely paint both of them at the same time. And then one will be ready a little bit before the other one. But by the time you're ready to paint on your green, um, the other brick will have dried. Hopefully. I'm going to do some dishes after this so that I can get the paint off my hands. <laughs> Alright. So my brick is primed with its first coat of paint. So I'm going to let that dry and then we'll come back and paint it green. Here is my dried brick. You can see I left the bottom um, au natural, so that didn't get painted. That's where the felt is going to go, and the rest of it has been covered in white paint. So now we're ready to do green on here. And I have four different greens to choose from. I think I'm going to go with the, the dark green, and then if I decide later that I want to make little square accents um, in various places, I will do that. Um, I have a problem with my big brush being too big for this green paint container, so I am, hmm, let's see, how can we make this work? <laughs> I can put some of this in a bowl or on a plate, but what I think I'm going to try first is to just squeeze some of it out of the bottle and onto the brick itself here. It's kind of thick. And then see how we do with just spreading that around. Ooh, I don't know if I like the consistency of this paint. I may have to add some other green to it. That was very weird. It was kind of gel-like. I haven't seen a gel-like acrylic paint before, so that one may have something going on with it. <laughs> And then we're just going to do the same thing that we did before, um, which is to cover the whole brick in green paint. Look, it's stretchy. Like slime. I'm not feeling good about the paint. I'm just going to deal with it. Um, if you don't like your paint, you could sponge it off, wash it off. It'll probably take the white off too, though that's underneath. 
or you can paint over it like I'm going to do with another one of the greens. So keep painting and we will meet back up in a little bit and see what we've got. Okay, here we go. We've got our bricks painted and dried. Uh, mine actually took about three coats of this green paint. Uh, remember the sort of weird darker green that I had painted with before? Um, that paint didn't cover particularly well, so I put two coats on of another green on top of that. So I think it's thoroughly saturated green creeper. So for the next part, we're going to do the face and possibly the toes of our creeper bookends. So go back to your reference photo again and um, for some ideas about how to do the face and the, and the toes. And there's a bunch of different options that you can try here. Um, you could use some of this painter's tape to map out the eyes and the nose and mouth um, and get some nice straight lines. You could freehand this and, and paint it on. You could use a Sharpie and draw it on and either just use the Sharpie or go back over it with black paint later on. Um, and you could use a straight edge or not use a straight edge. So there's all kinds of options here. Uh, so I think I'm going to do the face with um, some some of the tape and see how that goes. So I have two kind of squares for the eyes and we want them up there. So I'll get a piece of tape just to mark off that area and try and line it up with the end of my brick so that it's not too wonky. Okay, and then I want a piece going down for the side of the eyes, so a vertical strip of tape on that side, and another one on this side. Okay, and then I need something in the middle there. So this is going to be one that I have to, to cut um, to get that middle part. So make that as straight as possible to go between the eyes. And the nice thing about tape is that you can just lift it up and move it around if you don't have it in exactly the right spot. Okay, and then I need something for this um, to do the bottom of the eyes, but also leave out a portion for the nose. It's getting complicated, guys. So the bottom of the eyes would be like that. But does that leave me enough for my nose? We'll see. And then we want it to be straight on the ends here. Oops, that's slanted down a little bit. It's all about the repositioning of the tape. <laughs> This one, I want that edge to be a little bit straighter that's on the inside. My nose might be a little bit narrow. Okay, which side did I cut? <laughs> Let's make that a little bit straighter. There we go. Teeny tiny sliver of tape stuck to my fingernail. Okay, and then the mouth kind of comes in a little bit from the eye, so maybe like there. And we'll do another one on the other side, cutting the tape again. There. And then there's a, a piece down here. So it's you kind of got like a mustache going on. <laughs> so I just want a little 
rectangle kind of in the middle there. So let's see. Am I doing this right? This is kind of trial and error, so bear with me. Okay, there's that. And then I want to cut the little legs, legs, arms, bars of the mustache off. Like that ish. Does that look about right? Close enough. Okay, so we've got the the face mapped out. So once this is done, um, you can paint it with your black paint, or color it in with your sharpie marker if you want to do that. And then for the the toes, I think I'm just gonna do them in sharpie first, um, just because they're gonna be kind of small. Here's that picture of the toes again. Those are going to be small squares and it's going to be hard to keep them square with a, the paintbrush that I have. So let's see where. We'll say that one foot is over there and one foot is over there. And then I can just draw where they're going to be. Kind of halfway up. So Toes. Let's do one there, one there. And one there and one there. Let's see what we got. Okay. So I'm just drawing these on right now, and I will paint over them in a bit. And they connect to the other one down below. Same thing for these. I'm looking at my reference photo right now to make sure I've got them mostly in the right place. This one in the middle connects to the other two. so. Those are my toes. Looks like they're they're pretty good. Okay, so let me get my paint ready and then we will paint those on. All right, we're ready to paint. So I've got my black paint right here. And for the part up on the top, I can just paint it like it's a stencil because that's what it is. And the tape will hopefully prevent the paint from going places I don't want it to be, and it, let's hope it doesn't seep under the tape. And then down here, where my little feet are, my little toes, I'm going to huh, <laughs> look for a smaller brush. So one second while I do that. Okay, I'm back with a smaller brush. And I've got a little bit of paint here in the cap, which I think I'm going to try and use instead of reaching and fishing around in the bottle. And I just want to get, I don't want too much on the end of it because I don't want it to spread out all over the place. And here we go. And I'm holding my arm for more leverage here. to make it a little bit more stable while I'm painting this. And I do hope I get some nice crisp edges. I'm trying. Okay, so that's one side and we will get a little paint for the other side. And I'm just painting and strokes, the monk strokes going down right now. Need a little bit more for that last one. If you paint something and you don't like how it looks, 
you can, while it's still wet, wipe it off with a wet paper towel or sponge. Um, or you can let it dry and paint over it with your green again if you don't like how this looks. I think it looks okay. I don't know if we'll want to put more on. You can let it dry first and see if you if you think you need another coat of paint. This looks like it's drying pretty quickly, which is nice because yesterday it took quite a while for the green paint to dry. Um, be aware of that if you're on a time crunch or you're feeling impatient. The paint will take a while to dry. I think it was a, a few hours. So like maybe I painted one coat on, waited an hour for it to dry, painted another coat, waited an hour for that to dry, painted one more coat, and then waited an hour for that to dry, and then you know, times two because you have two bookends if you're making two of these. I like a set, so I am making two. All right, so that looks good. It looks a little messy on the top there now, but we're gonna take off the tape and see what it looks like underneath. If you have your brush with paint on it, put that aside, put it in some water and wash it off. Put mine down for just a second because I'm taking the tape off. I would like to see how this looks. Um, so hopefully I'll get the layers off in a good order and won't smear anything. There's that. Last part. Oh, the suspense. There we go. So that came out pretty crisp. Nice. Okay, and I'm gonna pause for a second while I clean my brush. So this may be all of the decoration that you wanna do, in which case I would just let this dry for an hour and then you can um, use the Mod Podge over this to seal it in nicely. Or if you don't think um, anything is gonna to happen to it, <laughs> Uh, on your shelf, then you can skip the Mod Podging part. I just like to do it to protect it so that the paint doesn't get chipped or come off on my hands or anything. Um, this is kind of a, I think most of these are glossy paints, so they hold up a little better anyway. And um, once once we do the Mod Podge part, we're going to put a little piece of felt, or I am, on the bottom here to protect the shelf from the brick. So you can just wait until that dries. If you do want to add more decoration, like I showed you some other pictures before of the creeper um, with more colors and different squares of colors. Let's see if I have that still. Yeah, so some of them are actually very colorful and have a bunch of different colored squares on them. Um, this one just has a few lighter ones. You could change your decoration. You could um, put some shadow around the feet to define those more if you wanted to. Um, you could also make a little stencil of like one of these, of a, a little square, and then just add different colors of green. Like I have some lighter greens like this one that I could do that with and just add some little squares around, or you could freehand them if you wanted to do that, free paint them <laughs> uh, all around on your on your creeper. Um, or I, I had an idea while I was uh, thinking about this yesterday. Um, if you have one of those punches that does little squares, if you had different kind of colors of green paper or even beige or, you know, something in that family, uh, you could cut out a bunch of, or punch out a bunch of different squares and then just use the Mod Podge to put those in different areas on it and that might look really cool. Um, I was thinking it would be neat to have like some gold paper in there so like with a metallic sheen and then that would that would make it look really fancy. So if you have any of those things on hand um, consider that as a possibility for decoration. I might put on um, a few uh, random different colored squares just to just for some variety. Now that I see it just as plain green, I'm like, I think it needs a little bit, a uh, little bit more. So I am going to uh, figure out a way to to paint on some squares. I think I'll probably just freehand them out on here. 
um, maybe draw them first with my Sharpie. Should we try that? I don't want to mess up what I painted already, but we'll try a few squares. Okay, so these squares, they might be around the size of the toenails. Where should we put them? Put some in proximity to one another. I actually want these to be connected. And you can do this on um, all of the different sides that you've painted. Just put one over here. Oh, careful. Don't get your paint on you. And then maybe a few up by the face. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. What do you think? It's a good randomization. All right. And then... Um, which one should I use? I think maybe we'll try the Irish moss. How sloppy is this? And now I'm worried about all of my paints and like whether they're <laughs> they're too watery or whatever. Uh, that looks like it's not a terrible consistency. I'm gonna mix I'm gonna mix it a little bit in the the lid here. Um, I'm taking some shortcuts and not using a palette or a plate or anything. I, I'm not. Um, mixing any of the colors that I'm using right now and I'm washing my brush out completely beforehand before I go into another color so this is fine I'm not going to corrupt my paints so I don't get so so that I don't get my hand in what I'm painting I'm going to start up at the top here and try and keep my hand off of the face that I just painted down there If your color looks a little bit like too bold, you can um, blot it a little bit to take some of that away. So you want it to be a little bit more subtle. And you can also use a paper towel or your finger like I just did to um, move any excess paint off of your artwork here. Because these are works of art, you realize, right? I'm interested to make other Minecraft creatures out of uh, bricks. I think they'd work really well, any of them that you wanted to do since all, almost all of them are square like this, right? Everything is squares or rectangles. Very blocky. This is cute. We're terrifying. Are you terrified of creepers? They're pretty easy to avoid, aren't they? I haven't played Minecraft in um, several years now. But my brother was running a Minecraft server for a while. I should ask him if he's still doing that. Yes, I think this was a good choice to add a little bit more color and detail to it. Be sure you can take as much time as you want to decorate I'm not holding a stopwatch to your project. All right, that's very cute. Um, so I'm gonna add a few more of those on other sides of it, but I'm gonna wait for this to dry right now. Uh, I encourage you to decorate as well. Okay, we're back. Everything looks to be dry. I did quite a bit more decoration on my blocks here. And I did a couple of um, coats of the lighter green paint. I actually don't mind that the marker's showing through on there. It gives it a little bit more definition. I got bolder too as I was doing these and freehanded a bunch of the, 
the squares. So now we just have to um, seal this all up and make it shiny. So I have some glossy uh, Mod Podge that I'm going to use to do that. And like before, um, where we painted the whole brick except for the bottom, that's what we're going to do here. So I'm using my, my big brush again so that I can cover that quickly. And if you stand your bricks up like I have in their shelf position, um, you can paint all of the sides <coughs> Excuse me, at the same time. Well, not at the same time, but you don't have to uh, wait for them to dry because they're lying on, a, on their side. So we'll do all of the sides that are available. I'm not going to paint the very, very bottom um, just because <laughs> it might get stuck to the cardboard down there and I don't want that to happen. So I'll go back after this part is dry and flip it over and just paint around the bottom there. So you do the same and then we'll take a look at them once they're all finished. We're getting near the end here. Uh, I just finished uh, painting around the edges here at the bottom of my uh, creeper bookends and now the last part is to apply some felt to the bottoms here. So I've got a piece here. Let's see. A piece there. Oh, that's how I was lining it up. Okay, so I'm just gonna measure it by holding it on to the bottom of the brick here and then cutting it to fit. If you don't have really sharp scissors you may need to upgrade to fabric scissors. I'm going to try and get by with these and turn this a little bit so I can cut the other side better. Okay, This doesn't have to be perfect. I will trim it up a little bit once it's rough cut. Okay, I just don't want it to stick out beyond the sides here, so I've got a little ragged edge here that I'm going to trim off. So this part is optional if you want to add felt to the bottom of your bricks. And it looks like this side is overhanging a little bit, so we'll trim off a little piece there too. <laughs> I'm going to recommend the fabric scissors for cutting felt or something sharper than what I have right here. Okay, so that's gonna work. Now, do I have enough felt left to do another piece? Not in that color. Fortunately, this is going on the bottom of the brick, so I don't need to care about whether it's matching. Here's a piece and another blue. That looks like it has enough. Looks like it'll, it'll work for us. So I'll just hold it up to this other piece and cut it from there. Almost done. To glue these on, um, I recommend some kind of craft glue or you could use a hot glue gun. just so it adheres well. So that's that piece, and that is that piece. Looks like it's pretty good. Oh yeah, and felt stretches a little bit, so I just pulled that corner a bit and now it fits. Okay. So I have this Craft Bond glue stick that I'm gonna try. Looks like it's you can just squeeze it and then apply it 
with that end. So let's do that. I did just like a zigzag there. And then stick my felt on. Um, I was tempted to flip these over and then uh, let the felt dry with that side down, but I'm afraid that the glue might actually seep through the felt since it's pretty porous. Um, and then stick to the cardboard that I have protecting my table, um, which would not be ideal. So I'm going to let it dry upside down like this. And just make sure that it's pressed down very well and stretched out to where I want it to be. Okay, and then we'll just let that dry, and then that should be it. Congratulations, you made it to the end. That was a long one for me, just because of all the steps of, or the drying periods that came in between things. So hopefully for you it will be a little bit faster. Here's a final look at the Creeper bookends after we did all the painting and the ceiling and the felting. <laughs> Ready to hold some books right between there. I hope you had fun making creeper bookends with me today and that yours turned out fabulous. Uh, for more fun ideas, please check out our website, www.huntleylibrary.org or subscribe to our YouTube channel and then you'll get all of our latest videos and uploads and things. Hope to see you in the library soon. Bye-bye.